everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're in beautiful Moab, Utah for EJS. So follow along as we see the show and get on the trail a little bit later. Let's head back to the show. We'll talk to some vendors about how to make it go fast and then how to glue it back together when you use the skinny pedal. Alright, so we recognize this vehicle quite well. Next vehicle, you need to get it put back together. One time that There's thing. one, one they just built. Good. So the show's a little busier. It's about 3 o'clock on Thursday. Got the metal cloak jail. Pretty neat. Pretty nice rack system on it. Something I need to look into. <laughs> so we'll make it around to the show. So Icon's got this kind of like a I'll call it a B lock type system. So when you run out of room in your JL, another door. <laughs> Who's got suits? Pretty, like, pretty, pretty, pretty well, I like how you're hiding well, back here. I'm, 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 I'm the So we're at the Easter Jeep Safari. We ran into the Lightbright crew. What's up, you guys? What's going on? Hey. Everybody knows who you, who they are, so. And if you don't, what rock have you been living on? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> all right, it's good to meet you all. Thank you. Absolutely, dude. Thank nice you. pleasure. You yeah. Okay, everyone, so we got Trent from Center Force Clutch here, and he's going to go over the okay. new setup for the JLs. Yeah, so the JL was a real problem child in terms of from the factory. They've had all kinds of recalls and noise issues and technical service bulletins and all that stuff. Of those. And so, uh, really, we had to pretty much start with a clean slate. Uh, so, what we have here, I don't, I don't have the JL clutch and pressure plate flywheel here. We've got JK stuff, but that's very, very similar. But one of the key components is our new hydraulic system. So we're offering, we're giving um, 
both a slave and a master cylinder. Uh, the factory stuff just was not up to the task of, uh, it, it had a very low pedal feel, very vague pedal feel. Um, these are OE supplied components, but they've been modified. Uh, it comes with a new line. And then of course we have our inertia flywheel. Again, this is a JK one, but the JL one is very, very similar. Uh, what we've done is we've added about eight pounds to the outside of the flywheel. Uh, that increases the rotational mass and inertia of the engine. What that does, it uh, allows the engine to operate at a lower RPM without stalling, so it's real handy for off-road use. Um, just adds inertia to the overall system, so you don't have to you don't have to slip the clutches bad. Right. We've actually got a video on our our YouTube channel that's kind of a before and after of taking a stock jail up a hill up until hill, it stalls out we went all around a corner with it. and then that. coming back with the with the inertia flywheel and everything and it was able to idle all the way up the hill without issue so and then in terms of the clutch assembly uh, we had to do a lot of tweaking again this is this is JK stuff but the JL stuff looks very similar to this uh, we have uh, a both a center force 2 or a dual friction this is the dual friction example it's a full face clutch on the or full face disc on the front and then this puck style disc on the back, what this does is it increases holding capacity. Uh, this is a little bit more aggressive clutch. So this would be one if you, you're running really big tires or you put a supercharger or turbo on the motor, uh, real beneficial there. Otherwise the Center Force 2 is also a great option for uh, a stock or lightly modified vehicle. That's what's in this truck here. Pretty much what I've always run is the Center Force 2 for off-road use. Works fantastic. Of course we have our pressure plate the pressure plate, um, we do a number of things to increase holding capacity, one of which is these centrifugal weight systems. This is actually a patented design the Center Force does. The, the, the theory behind this is that these weights act as a function of RPM. So as RPM speeds up, these weights will pull out on the uh, fingers and actually pull up on the clutch fingers themselves, which increases holding capacity. So as RPM comes up, so too does uh, our clamping force number of things on the inside of the pressure plate to uh, improve engagement, uh, improve release time, you know, things of that nature. So it took a while on the JL to get it all, to get all the factory stuff addressed, um, but we've got it done now. We're, we're, we're in production. We've got a lot of back orders to fill, but we should be uh, able to fill orders fairly quickly by June. Nice. And I see the, the, the throwout bearing is you get a, a cast one now to get yes. rid of that plastic yeah one. we get rid of the plastic throwout bearing that was another problem um so yeah we have a, a, a much improved sturdier uh metal throwout bearing for those well we look forward to putting that in our jail awesome so i appreciate the information no problem thank, thank you, you. Pretty sweet setup. It is quite a bit shorter. King and Dyna Track. Yeah, that's what it Interesting front end on this 4xE. Total front custom grill. That's 4 by the blue. All right, so we're here with, with Greg with Premier Power Welder. He's going to tell us a little bit about his welding systems. All right, so what we have here is we have a um, welding system that is controlled, uh, ran by the vehicle. Um, you have your welding control box here. You're required to change the alternator. Okay. And um, when the system is off, the switches are off, this is your charging system on your vehicle. Okay. This is take, takes the place of your factory alternator, factory charging system. When you turn the welding system to the on position, um, you put uh, your welding leads, like this little display is here, put the welding leads in place, Okay. bring your RPMs up. The gauge is gonna 
gauge is going to come up into just before the red area where it says weld. You're going to you're going to stick weld. You're going to try it a little bit, to make sure that works. If that okay. works good, go for it. Do your welding and your repair. If you need more heat, you increase your RPMs. That brings brings you up into a higher amperage and voltage, more current. If you need less, you decrease your RPMs. That gives you less current. Okay. And then uh, when you're all done, you idle back down, turn the system off, and hit the trail. Um, at the same time, on this, we have two different control boxes. We have the full-size control box that has a uh, DC outlet here that'll run like a Makita grinder and other DC powered type tools. Okay. Um, then we have our other control box, it's strictly just a welder. This uh, has the same ports and all that for the welding leads. Turn it on, do your welding, turn it off and, and hit the trail. What, typically, what, type, what size electrodes can you use with the stick? Uh, what we recommend is 3 30 seconds. You can use up to 8th inch. And we recommend 6011, 7018, 6018, 6013. So, and, and there's a plethora right. of different rods Especially to use. Out of position. Yeah, exactly. So, lots of different rods, lots of people, you know. They they have their preferences and Absolutely. and uh, then another item that we have is we have a uh, this is a flux core uh, wire feed gun and it this is designed to work with the Premier Power Welder works absolutely fantastic. It is a point and shoot type. Yeah, point and shoot. It's adjustable, so you adjust the speed of the of the spool motor. Okay. Then we also have a strictly just battery power for an emergency type. Uh, welder uh, wire feed gun there that runs off of two batteries. Okay. And that's about it. We have an alternator for just about every vehicle. JL, JT, all of them? Yep. JK, uh, old TJs, CJs, YJs, uh, Fords, Chryslers, Chevys. Got an just about every. Yep. Just right. about. So. so, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Go online at uh, PremierPowerWelder.com is the best place to start. Okay. So, well, all right. Well, all I do, right. Do appreciate it. Thank all you. All right, man. Thank appreciate you. It. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah. You got the Magneto build you always hear about. It's obviously not a supercharger. Battery pack sitting up under the hood. Keep it as a charging station out here. It's quite large. Big little solar powered. All weapons are so six speed in And kind of a 40s retro 4xE. I'm guessing the factory half doors. So you got the big grand wagon here. And this thing is plush as it gets. You ain't taking this one out on a trail. See the same from the, from the rear. Things huge. Three rows of seating. The rear area's got its own sunroof. Everything looks factory. All right, once we're right here at Easter Jeep Safari, and we're with Tom with Magnuson, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his superchargers. How you doing everyone? I'm Todd Payne with Magnuson Superchargers out of Ventura, <laughs> California. Uh, this is um, a sample unit that we use on our Jeep JKs, JLs, and JTs. It uses an Eaton rotating pack. It's a 1900 to 1 1.9 liter supercharger. Okay. The kit includes everything you need to install it. So uh, it's got its own cooling system. It's low temp radiator, water pump, belt, hoses, everything you need, including calibration. Right. What does it typically add to the horsepower of the 3.6? So this 
system will add about 100 horsepower. We'll put about 400 horsepower at the crank over okay. stock, so it's about 100 over stock. And that's um, that's certified in California, so that's carb so legal. So it's fairly strict em emissions and everything in yes. California. Yes, yep. Very the strictest in the country, so that is emissions legal. And uh, we're not pushing too much on it. It's 6 PSI of boost. Well, that's so, not too much. No. And it's a it's a bypass system, so when you're in a cruising type of situation, the bypass opens up and allows basically to run without boost. And then when you get into the throttle or get into a loaded condition, bypass closes and you're back in the boost and you've okay. got the power you need. And if you're still in warranty, this won't void warranty at all? Or? So we offer a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty from the date of service. So okay. if you do have a vehicle that's under warranty, we, we kind of match that and cover it. Okay. Once it's out of that, then our standard warranty is 12 months, one year, 12,000 miles on our supercharger and all our components. Okay, and I guess is this a kit where you actually mail it and it's instructions for the people who own the vehicle can install or do you have installation points or? Well, we have dealers and installers for okay. the folks that don't want to do this kind of work, but our install manual is kind of built for the guy who likes to turn his own ranches and okay. do it himself. It's online at magnusonsuperchargers.com. You can look up your application, whether it's a Jeep or a Toyota or anything, and our install manuals are available there. So folks can flip through them and see what's involved with installation. Okay, so Magnuson, uh, Superchargers.com. That's us. Any other uh, social media at all? Or? We're on um, Instagram as well. Okay. Uh, and we uh, we do a little bit on Facebook, but mostly Instagram. Mostly Instagram? Yeah. Okay. All right, I appreciate it. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Thanks appreciate for coming it. by, everyone. We found this lineup of little Jeep engines. Everything from the 6.4 to the 2 liter. All right, so it was another great event. It was a 2022 EJS. Seen a lot of vendors, did a little wheeling. Overall, great trip. So if you would, leave me some comments below. Let me know what you thought of it. And I'll see you in the next video.